a picture is worth a thousand words. It's a very old adage that we all know and probably have used or thought uh, over the years. Uh, as wonderful as the spoken and written word is, sometimes a picture tells a story better. I believe that drawing uh, can be taught and that it is the language. I'm, I would like to give you two examples. Uh, one, uh, how it can be taught, and the second, how it can be used as a language. We spend a lot of time uh, teaching children how to uh, letter and to write. So we give them lined paper, we show them upper and lower case letters, and have them repeat them uh, time after time so that they can make legible uh, letters uh, and use them to communicate. But we don't spend as much time teaching them how to draw. And I think that's because we all draw naturally. Children love to draw, and their drawings are wonderful. And I'll give you an example, the human face. When kids draw a face, they usually start with a nice circle, a nice round face. Little kids' faces are round. And it's fun to draw a circle. We're, we're built to draw arcs. Our shoulders pivot, our elbows pivot, and our wrists pivot. So when we go to draw, we naturally make an arc. Which may be why some people say, I can't even draw a straight line. <laughs> they can with practice. You do when you letter, and if you want. These lines aren't perfectly straight. If they were, I, if I wanted to make them perfectly straight, I would use a straight edge. But they represent a straight line. When a child makes a face, usually the first thing they put in are the eyes. And if you notice, most children's drawings, they put the eyes very high <coughs> on the face. And I think there are two reasons for that. One of them is that their vocabularies aren't fully developed, and they communicate with faces. Uh, just We all do, but with kids they concentrate more on doing that. Just as your dog or cat does, they read your face. So the hair is superfluous to them. Plus, they're short, so they're looking <laughs> up. And when they see your face, they see the eyes higher. As an afterthought, maybe they'll give us some hair. But with just a little bit of instruction, you can take that drawing and make it a little more believable. Give it a shape that's a little less round. And then locate the eyes by finding the center from the chin to the top of the skull and dividing the face. The width of the eye is roughly one-fifth of the width across the human face. So if you divide this into five sections and place an eye there, you're a long way to making, long way further towards making a human face. It's a very simple technique. And it's not to take anything away from the children's drawing. The children's drawings are wonderfully creative. But they're their own critics. As they age, they realize, I just draw like a kid. And if they're not given instruction, they stop drawing and maybe never draw again. So I'd also like to give you an example of, of uh, drawing as language. When, when I was about 25 years old, I was waiting in, air, in an airline terminal in Florida to come home to Philadelphia. And uh, I, I was the first one there. I was early. There were no employees. There were no other passengers. And I wished I hadn't put my sketchbook in my luggage. But I had, and it was already in the baggage system. So I was just alone with my thoughts. And then a large group of people came along. 
They were gesticulating, they were very loud, and they were speaking a language that I had never heard. They looked all around, they looked puzzled, and then they focused on me, because they, I was the only one there. A woman stepped forward from the group, and in English she said, are you going to Philadelphia? And I said, yes. And she said, oh, good. And she took a girl by the shoulders and presented her and said, this is my niece. Will you make sure she gets on the plane? And will you make sure she gets off in Philadelphia? I said, well, sure. And then they left. <laughs> so I had this girl of about 16 years of age as my charge, and I could not communicate with her. I really wished I'd left my sketchbook out of my suitcase at that point. But I hadn't. When we boarded the plane, the first chance I got, I asked the stewardess if I could have a pad of paper and a pencil. Fortunately, she had one and gave it to her. So I started to sketch, and pretty soon we were handing the pad back and forth, and we were communicating. And our worlds opened up to each other. She was from Brazil and going to visit relatives in Philadelphia. And it was just a wonderful thing, the simplest thing. Uh, just a drawing utensil and some paper. It could have been a stick and a bare patch of earth. Uh, so, uh, we can all be taught how to draw. Some people are resistant to that but they probably drew as a child. And with a little bit of help, they could start on the way to drawing more realistically <coughs> and to be able to communicate. Draw, and then make that picture that's worth a thousand words. Drawing is often uh, the quickest, fullest measure of communication. Thank you.